external oblique intercostal plane block. This is Dr. Terkawi. I'm currently a clinical assistant professor at the Department of Anesthesiology, Perioperative and Pain Medicine, Stanford University. So this lecture is part of, um, you can call it a course that covers the truncal uh, regional analgesia. So all these blocks that you see, I have videos for them. Uh, you can watch them. And I have also uh, one long video. Uh, I named it the fundamentals of uh, truncal regional analgesia that will describe in details the relevant anatomy and mechanism. So this is an important picture again and again every time we are thinking about interfacial plane block uh, for the thoracic wall. Um, this is the spinal nerves from T2 to T12 and as you see here the spinal nerve is formed by the ventral and dorsal root. This will give you the spinal nerve, which soon will give you the ventral and dorsal rami. The ventral rami continue at the intercostal nerve. The dorsal rami give you the medial and the lateral branches. Um, the intercostal nerve uh, branches uh, around the mid axillary line give you the lateral cutaneous branches which further branches to anterior and posterior and closer to the sternum it give you the anterior cutaneous branch with further branches to medial and lateral so you might ask yourself external oblique is an abdominal muscle, how come we're doing thoracic uh, block? Well, I would like to remind you that the external oblique originate from uh, the outer surface of the fifth to the twelfth rib and it insert in the linea alba, pubic tubercle anterior iliac crest and it is supplied by intercostal nerves from T7 to T11. Then in, in, in this picture here uh, you can see how this uh, intercostal nerve travel uh, obliquely and inferior and wrapping around from the posterior to the anterior along the ribs and it branches um, here the lateral cutaneous branch as you see uh, then around here you give you the anterior cutaneous branch the lateral also give you the anterior and posterior so these branches uh, uh, underneath the external uh, oblique and in this um, above the intercostal muscle so it make a perfect sense if you put a large volume there that it will spread in this direction and in this direction and you will cover both the lateral and anterior cutaneous nerve and this is um, how this block become really helpful so how we do this block, um, position the patient in supine or lateral decubitus position. You use a um, linear transducer, uh, place the transducer in the sagittal plane between the midclavicular and anterior axillary line at the level of the sixth rib with the orientation marker directed cranially um, rib 6 can be identified either by placing the ultrasound transducer at the level of the lower costal margin where T, uh, where T10 or um, uh, 10th rib is identified and then counting up or probably easier if you identify the xephoid 
process and the rip at that level will be the seventh rip and then move the transducer up one rip up um, rotate the transducer so the cranial end is directed slightly medial and the caudal end slightly lateral i will show you a picture in a minute um, the following structure uh, should be identified from superficial to deep subcutaneous tissue external oblique internal or intercostal muscles uh, between the ribs then pleura and lung so this is the mid clavicular line and this is the anterior axillary line in between them so this is the cephoid here uh, you find the sixth rib and you tilt the prop uh, um, this way so you will see the external oblique uh, underneath it the intercostal muscles which is external internal and inter innermost and basically you're going to put your medication in that uh, facial plane so um, and then advance the needle in plane from the superior medial to inferior lateral direction through the external oblique muscle the place the local anesthetic between the external oblique muscle and the intercostal muscle at the caudal end of the sixth rib and between six and seven watch the hydrodissection of the two muscle between six and seven uh, and keep going until the eighth rib um, usually you can use 20 to 30 ml of local anesthetic now what nerves we block with this block usually the lateral and anterior branches of the intercostal nerves from t7 to t10 patient who received this block exhibited consistent dermatomal sensory blockade of t6 to t10 at the anterior axillary line and t6 and t9 at the midline base and the cadaveric studies usually it's a good option for upper abdominal wall analgesia especially open liver open gallbladder surgery so something like subcostal incision and um, it is really helpful in extremely obese patient where it's very difficult to do subcostal tab block this is way uh, easier and more reliable and consistent um, contraindication again just the general contraindication patient refusing allergy to local anesthetic and infection at the side bleeding disorder complication can be last can be pneumothorax can be bleeding and can be infection so here is an ultrasound picture this is rib number six you uh, kind of touch the rib and go uh, between the external oblique the intercostal muscle and put the numbing medication and here is a nice uh, clip for you So here is the needle coming from cranial to caudal and hydrodissecting the muscle between the external oblique and intercostal uh, muscles. Thank you for watching.